Hi, I'm Lauren Mulheim, and I'm the author of When Your Teen Has an Eating Disorder, Practical Strategies to Help Your Teen Recover from Anorexia, Bulimia, and Binge Eating. This book is based on the principles of family-based treatment, or FBT, and is designed to help parents supporting a teen in recovery from an eating disorder. One question that many parents have is when they should start to reincorporate fear foods. These are foods that your teen has typically been avoiding. They are often the richer and more fun foods. These can also be foods on which your teen is binge eating. So you will want to make a list of all the foods that you believe your teen is afraid of. It's not necessary to involve them in this activity. In fact, in my experience, most teens do not want to cooperate in divulging all the foods that they're afraid of. So I suggest that parents think about all those foods your teen used to eat and go back about two to three years before there was signs of an eating disorder. I suggest going back that far because many parents will realize in retrospect that their teen was dropping foods um, way before they were clear there was an eating disorder. And to ensure full recovery, you'll want your teen to go back to eating all those foods. So while this may seem like a long list, I suggest you write them all down and attempt to rank them in terms of a hierarchy. And you will want to gradually, over time, expose your teen to all of those foods that they are either afraid of and avoiding or afraid of and binging on. And it's not necessary to have them in an exact order, but it's helpful to start with some foods that are less scary. And so you'll want to prepare a regular quantity of this food and serve it to your teen in the course of their regular meal plan. This is not to say that every food has to be a fear food, um, but you will want to start to incorporate them with some regularity. Now, some parents will need to do this from the very outset, especially if their teen has a very restricted range of foods and needs to gain a lot of weight. Then it may be impossible to start to help them gain weight without reincorporating some of these fear foods. For other families where the range of foods is uh, pretty good and um, they, the teen has enough foods to start refeeding them on, parents may delay incorporating these foods until further on in the treatment. That said, in my experience, most parents uh, prefer or wish they would have started incorporating fear foods earlier. I really encourage parents to do this by phase two of FBT waiting too long actually makes it harder. Now it's important to realize that when you start to incorporate these foods it will raise your anxiety and your teens as well. And so be prepared for that and use the same strategies you've been using to help your teen eat other meals. It's helpful to think about incorporating foods that are similar to foods that the teen is already eating first. So if the teen is eating toast you can start with an English muffin and graduate to a bagel. You can break things down into steps so that uh, if you're introducing pasta, you can start with a pasta uh, salad that has vegetables in it as a side dish and then work your way up to pasta as a main meal with tomato sauce and then eventually pasta with a cream sauce or cheese sauce. And you will probably need to uh, introduce these foods multiple times before your teen will be able to eat them without intense anxiety. That's how exposure works. You can also think about earlier on incorporating those foods that are central to the family. So if you eat rice at a lot of family meals, that might be one of the foods you want to incorporate sooner. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope you'll check out my book which has exercises and worksheets for exposure to fear foods. The book is available on Amazon and via my website, Eating Disorder Therapy LA.